folks and welcome to the hillbilly kitchen today we're going to be making three no bake pie crusts so you can enjoy pies all summer long without heating up the house with the oven <laughs> Okay, now to make these pie shells, the technique is the same for all of them, and the ingredients are very, very similar. Um, we're going to do a chocolate crust, a vanilla crust, and a graham cracker crust. Most of you are familiar with graham cracker crust. Um, most of you probably have made it, so if you can make that, you can make these other ones. I've seen the um, chocolate crusts on the internet, on videos, and on YouTube on videos, and everybody who is doing this chocolate crust just about on the internet is using Oreo cookies. And they tell you to buy the bag of Oreos and take them apart, scrape the cream off. Well, that's just exhausting and it doesn't make any sense. You can get chocolate graham crackers. You can also get all kinds of little chocolate wafer cookies for kids. Any chocolate cookie will work for this crust. Um, the graham crackers are the most commonly available everywhere. Uh, and they're easy to get. When you're doing a graham cracker crust, whether you're doing chocolate or regular, you're gonna use about one packet. They all come in boxes that are divided up in three packets, so a box will make about three pie crusts. The vanilla wafers, you're gonna use about half a box of those. And you do have the option with the vanilla wafers of separating them. You'll need about 14 to 16 vanilla wafers, depending on the brand you pick and the size of the cookie. And then you can lay them around the edge of your pie. Once you get, you have to do the bottom of the crust, of course, and put a whole cookie around the edge, which makes a really pretty pie crust. It presents better on the plate with the piece of pie. Um, the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a little sugar in these crusts. Between a quarter and a third of a cup, I like to keep it at about a quarter of a cup, and you're going to need butter. You're going to need six tablespoons of butter for all of these crusts. Well, six tablespoons of butter each for these crusts, I'm sorry. And six tablespoons will do a crust and about a quarter of a cup of sugar per crust. Now the crumbs you're going to want once you have ground them up between one and one half cup of cups of crumbs. If you have less than a cup of crumbs, it's not gonna cover the bottom of your pie good, and your crust is gonna be really thin, and it's gonna break apart, and it's just not gonna be good. If you have more than a cup, of half, cup and a half of crumbs after you've crushed them up, whether you use a blender or food processor or crush them in a bag, it doesn't matter. If you've got more than that cup and a half, though, your crust is going to be really thick and it's going to kind of take over your pie. Um, like I said, the technique is really simple. These have already been, um, I use my little hand blender food processor attachment to crush these up. You can use a regular blender, you can use a food processor, or you can put these in a Ziploc bag and crush them up with a rolling pin or beat on them or whatever. But you want them crushed up really fine like this, and that's all I've done to these. This is a packet each of regular graham crackers and the chocolate graham crackers, which is about a third of a box. And my vanilla wafers, this is a half a box of vanilla wafers. Um, you want between five and six ounces before you crush them, which will give you about your cup to a cup and a half of crumbs. Um, I divided them up. I did take out 18 because these are kind of small. And I'm just going to crush them up to show you about how long it takes to do that. Um, and it depends on your food processor or your blender how long it's going to take to do it. This one's kind of small, but it does one crust pretty easy.
you want to pulse it like that and keep an eye on it. You do want it crumbled up really fine. Um, I'm going to take my blender off and shake this a little bit. I've got some pieces in there still. <laughs> kind of get everything out of the corners and just hit it again. If you have a lot of big pieces in this after you've crushed it up, it will make it kind of hard to press it out in the bottom of your pan. Okay, and you want to add your sugar to your crumbs and give that a little bit of a stir. And like I said, the technique for all three of these crusts is exactly the same. Then add your butter. If you're using a big blender or a big food processor, you can add your sugar and your butter to your crumbs in the blender or the food processor. Um, and it will stir it up a little bit easier. That's perfectly fine. And then when you get it out, it'll just be kind of soggy crumbles. I did not do it because that little hand blender, it's just not a huge container on it. Okay, now this crust here is going to be a little bit more moist than these because I did actually take out uh, probably a third of my cookies before I crushed it up. So what's in here has more butter in it per volume than these will have. Well, I should have kept my food processor bowl to put my cookies in. It's all right though. Now because I didn't keep a bowl to put my whole cookies in, I'm gonna have to kind of fish them out as I press this out. Um, if you use the whole cookies on the side, you do want to turn them so that the top side of the cookie is toward the outside of your pan. That way when you cut the pie, um, the top side of the cookie will be what shows on the edge of the pie. Looks like I got maybe one too many cookies for the edge here, but that's okay. Um, you do want to make sure you have enough to go all the way around the edge to make your edge solid. And you want to pick out whole cookies for the edge of the pie, um, not the broken ones. Now this one here pressed out really easy because it had that extra butter in it because I took out so many of the cookies. Um, the other two, the graham cracker crust and the chocolate crust, might be a little bit more difficult to press out, but not too bad. Now before you put a pie in this, you do want to put it in the refrigerator for an hour or two. And what that does is it sets up the butter and makes the pie crust firm so that your filling doesn't soak into it. And these vanilla wafer ones, they're really good for fruit pies, strawberries, raspberries, peaches. And we're going to do some of those pies. Um, they're just icebox pies and they're really, really delicious, especially in the summertime. And I'm going to show you how to make those and I'm going to use this crust in them. So kind of mark this video and hang on to it so you know how to make this crust. Okay, we'll set this on the side. Like I said, before you use it, it goes in the fridge for an hour, half, two hours. You want to make sure that your um, butter is good and firm before you pour your filling in. Again, add your sugar. You do want to add the sugar to your crumbs before you add the butter because it makes it much easier to get it evenly distributed. Once you add that butter, it's a little bit harder to get the sugar mixed in even. 
if you're really watching calories and trying to cut down on how many calories, how many carbs you eat, you can eliminate that sugar in these crusts. Um, the crust will mix up just fine without them and it'll hold together without them and it'll still be plenty sweet enough in a pie. I said for the chocolate, you can use six ounces of any kind of chocolate wafer cookie or the chocolate graham crackers. Um, I made one of these chocolate crusts earlier and I used some um, chocolate alphabet cookies that Charlotte was eating. I, she ate two or three cookies and then the whole box was left open. So I used the rest of them for a pie crust so they didn't get stale. Now you can see this is much drier than our um, vanilla wafer crust over there because we took out so many of our cookies and this has more crumbs. But it will still press out and it will still be just fine. If you've made a lot of graham cracker crusts, you probably have your own tips and tricks and techniques that you use to press these out. I generally like to start with a spoon. Sometimes I will use these little measuring cups or I will use the bottom of a glass or something like that if I'm having a hard time getting one to press out. Because if you're just pushing it out with a spoon, like see this one is starting to break when I try to go out to the edges. And you can press it a little more if you have something with a wide bottom like that glass or even a little measuring cup. So let's try the glass. Once you get the bottom of your crust pressed out pretty solid, it's easy to go around and get the sides. You do want to make sure you press your sides though, or after you add your filling and then you cut your pie, the sides will just fall off of the crust or off your pie if you don't. Just kind of follow the edge of your pan with your finger as you're pressing the sides cap it off that way all your crumbs don't go out of the pan onto your countertop and it kind of finishes off the edge of the crust too if you use a glass for this you do need one with a flat bottom and just slightly curved sides if you had one that perfectly matched the um, edge on your pie plate that would be great this one's pretty close though. That looks pretty good. I could go around the edge of that again, but oops, I actually think it looks pretty good. And I tend to never leave well enough alone, so I'm gonna leave well enough alone. Okay, and our last one is the graham cracker crust. And like I said, these all work the exact same way. Just add your sugar to your crushed up crumbs. Give it a little stir and then add your butter. Now I do have one more tip for you. I told you that you needed to sit these in the refrigerator for an hour and a half to two hours until that butter is completely firm before you add your pie filling to it. Now if you're in a hurry, if you're making a pie because you're going somewhere and you don't have time to wait two hours on your butter to get hard again you can stick these in the oven for five to seven minutes on 375 and what that will do is it will set the butter in the crumbs without having to wait that couple of hours for it to get hard again now i know i said they're no bake they really are no bake you don't have to do that it will just speed up the process of getting the crust ready to add your filling. And sometimes you're in a hurry and you need to. But five to seven minutes with the oven on doesn't heat up the house nearly as bad as the hour to an hour and a half that it takes normally to bake a pie. So, you know, if you're in a hurry, that's not too bad in the summertime.
I really prefer these cookie crusts and the graham cracker crusts unbaked. I like them. I like to put them in the refrigerator and let them get hard and then use them. But sometimes when you're in a hurry, I have some news that I want to share with you all. Um, I told you on here not too long ago that I really believe that this is what God wants me to be doing with my life. And I have been trying ever since um, Samantha and David announced that they were going to be opening yesteryear to balance the two because I had been working there three to five days a week and then I tried cutting back to three to four days a week and you know it just it seemed to be kind of one of those all-consuming things and it was either all or nothing but I have decided that this is what God wants me to do and it's time that I did it. It's time that um, I put my faith in Him to provide what I needed to allow this to happen. Um, I think this channel has reached a lot of people. Um, I think it's helped a lot of people. I know I really enjoy talking to y'all and I truly feel like this is my purpose. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the Hillbilly Kitchen full time. I hope that y'all will stick with me. You can look forward to video uploads much more regularly, hopefully at least two a week. Um, like I said, I think with the kind of videos that we're putting out, two a week is probably about the limit that Brett and I can handle, but we might be able to squeeze in three occasionally. Um, I'm working on some other stuff for the channel, some good giveaways and things. I hope I'm going to be announcing some of those coming up pretty soon. I know y'all enjoy those. Going to be reviewing some new products that are coming out and maybe making some changes to the channel. Um, I'm not going to go to any kind of paid content or memberships or anything like that. And I don't think that that's what God wants me to do either. I mean, I do appreciate all of you that have subscribed, everybody who comments on every video. And I'll be able to answer more comments now because I will have far more time. Um, I hope we get up some more videos before Mother's Day, at least one more. But if I don't, I want to wish all of you a very happy Mother's Day. And I want to tell you that my prayer for all of you and all of my children this Mother's Day is that at some point in your life, you find your purpose, what God intended you to be, and you find the time and the courage and the tools that you need to live your purpose in life. Um, because I think, you know, that's what makes life worth living. And like I said, I really appreciate all of you that have subscribed and commented. All of you helped me, help convince me that this is where I need to be. Um, and this is what I need to be doing. Uh, I hope I'm right. I really think that this channel um, has a purpose and it's more than just no baked pie crust. It's a place where people can come together and where they can fellowship and they can feel free to express their opinions about Jesus, about God, about salvation, and they can share their experiences, their blessings, their hopes, um, their prayers, and we can pray for each other and dream for each other and hope for each other and love each other here. 
So with all that being said, if you're planning a trip to yesteryear, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be there anymore, except occasionally to visit like you guys. Um, Alex is still there every day and she will be happy to make you the best sandwich you can get anywhere. Samantha's still there most of the time and Charlotte's there a lot of times. You can still stop by and say hi to them and David will be there baking bread every day. So y'all can still go there and get all the things that you enjoyed when you were there visiting. I'm sorry, like I said, that I'm not going to be there anymore, but I will be here. And like I said, I will be seeing you two to three times a week now. So these are all done already and they all look really good, except for my chocolate crumbs that I got in the graham cracker crisp because I didn't get out an extra spoon. <laughs> But that's okay. Nobody will taste those chocolate crumbs in that crust. I said if you want them in a hurry, just pop them in the oven, 375, 5 to 7 minutes, but it's not necessary. Otherwise, put them in the refrigerator, chill them for an hour and a half to two hours. And the graham cracker crust is good with everything. You can put fruit pies, chocolate pies, you know, anything in it, any kind of cream pie or anything. The chocolate pie goes with some fruits better than others, definitely with chocolate pie. And I have got a chocolate pie recipe for you. And that's the other one that I hope I'm gonna get up before Mother's Day. If I don't get it up, happy Mother's Day, guys. And the vanilla one goes really good with all kinds of fruit. And we've got some really delicious fruit pies that we're gonna make this summer and put in that vanilla crust. So thanks for joining us on the Hillbilly Kitchen. I'm going to see you guys again real soon. Don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.